environmental risk assessment. It's really not very different to any other risk assessment that you might be familiar with and is just, a, I guess, a formalised way of doing the kind of risk assessment that we all do every day in our lives in order to keep ourselves safe. So the learning objectives of this little video are to describe how risk assessment is part of environmental impact assessment more generally, to think about the perception of risk and the diversity of ways in which people think of and value hazards and outcomes, and be able to apply a risk assessment methodology. So risk assessment is really looking for bad things that might happen. So this is hazards that may result in undesirable consequences either to human health or the environment. And particularly, we're looking to avoid catastrophic impacts. So a catastrophic impact, you might think of something like an oil spill, not a natural occurrence, like maybe a large wildfire, was never meant to be in the environment, was an accident and has fairly disastrous consequences. So there's lots of examples that I can use. This is one that was pretty big and fairly recent where an, a well in deep water in the Gulf of Mexico, I'll show you on a map in a minute, um, there was an accident, it caught fire, um, in the explosion people were killed and it took a long time for this to get under control and had quite widespread impact. So this is where it was. Uh, eventually the fire was put out, but it took a long, long time to stop the oil from gushing from this particular rig. Um, and it was eventually closed, but not before an awful lot of crude oil had escaped. So you might want to bear that in mind when we're thinking about this. This is a risk matrix that now that you've seen it, you'll probably see it all over the place. And it's the way that we think about the interaction between the possible impacts, which might be catastrophic in the example that we just talked about, or might be fairly insignificant, and the way that they interact with likelihood. So is this undesirable event fairly rare or pretty negligible in terms of its likelihood? or is it actually pretty probable? And what we're trying to do is stay out of the red and orange and get things into a moderate or negligible possible risk. So it's not the risk of something good happening, it's the risk of some hazard uh, having an undesirable effect on either human health or the, or the environment. And this is something that we are all familiar with every day as somebody who gets around and commutes on a bike, I am constantly assessing my risks, both in terms of deciding whether or not to ride somewhere or not, in the case of it being wet and dark. Um, and the things that I do to mitigate that risk, I make sure that I can be seen, I wear bright clothing if it's during the day, I um, have lights on, lots of lights on if it's at night, um, I ride on the footpath if I don't think the road is safe, all of this ongoing thinking that we're doing in our lives is a, an informal risk management that's going on. So um, this is done also more formally in ways that aren't related to the environment. So when you apply for a visa to a foreign country, you are put through a risk check. Is there any reason why this visa shouldn't be granted? And in terms of the environment, um, environmental impact itself is a risk assessment exercise where we're trying to forecast what might happen and reduce the possible impacts and the consequences of those impacts. But if we take, um, for example, threatened species management and decisions about risk levels and threat levels, that in itself, even though it's not called a risk assessment process, is risk assessment. And there's lots of ways in which risk assessment is applicable to the environment, <clears throat> not just ecology, but more generally threatening processes around 
weeds, introduced species, um, species pests, um, inappropriate fire regimes. Uh, these all cause risks to the maintenance or enhancement of things that we value like biodiversity. So usually it's applied to specific project or activities. So in the case of threatened species management, a particular species with a known distribution and, and some guess at the threats to that and forecasting about threats and then decisions are made and plans are drawn up. So it, it might be quite specific, so it might apply for a specific project like our waste management exercise. We go through a risk assessment process as part of the paperwork before we go out and do the risk audit. So it might be quite a big project like the installation of offshore gas pipeline. So all of the activities as part of that project are screened for possible hazards, and the interaction between the likelihood of that event occurring and the consequences of that occurring. And then if it gets up into those intolerable areas of the risk matrix, then something needs to be done before the project proceeds. And you need to be fairly pessimistic and creative when you're thinking about this. Uh, unless you've done this activity or run this program before, it's amazing what can crop up that you just hadn't thought of. So part of a formal risk assessment process, um, there might be triggers a bit like what you see in front of you here, just to prompt the kind of thinking about what what potential hazards are and what we need to apply in the case. So in the case of risk and waste auditing, which is a class that we've run in environmental impact assessment for many years now, um, we need to think about the way in which either human health or the environment like stormwater, soil, plants might come into contact with the hazards that are resulting of this activity, what the consequences of those are, what risk area it puts us into on the matrix, and then how we might mitigate that. So I'll show you some examples. Um, a really problematic possibility is that there might be syringes in the waste. Uh, this could introduce possible needle stick injury and contamination. Um, definitely not going near any kind of waste, manual waste sorting without gloves on, possibly double gloves, um, latex gloves with more heavy duty gloves over the top. Um, if we think that the possibility of finding syringes in the waste is moderate, then maybe what needs to be ha to happen is that people who have some experience open all of the waste bags first and check the contents before there's any more sorting done. <clears throat> so this is um, possible things that could happen, needing to be pessimistic about the possibilities and then me needing to be um, thorough in terms of the mitigation and how that's applied. And this might be personal protective equipment like gloves, it might be process, it might be the way that you lay something out, it might be the order that you do things in. So these are all the sort of screens that you put in place to try to prevent a hazard becoming an incident and there being consequences. So it might be a formal risk assessment where you think pessimistically through all the things that might go wrong, it might be um, work management practices, um, part of process, lots of different things, personal planning, personal protective equipment, and all of these things together try to reduce the risk. So risk assessment is not that different to other processes that we've talked about where you establish the context, you think about the possible hazards, you think about the ways in which the likelihood and the consequence might interact to come up with a whole lot of risks. You look at the ones that are very high risk and then try to treat those risks to bring them down and implement, monitor and review. So risk is a tricky thing 
so it is the interaction between the consequence and probability but there also is this element of perception and public concern so that might be a bit different to what's actually happening but nevertheless this is an important part of risk assessment and maybe things need to be done to reduce people's concern as well as address what experts would regard as the actual possible consequences because people are not necessarily very good at perceiving risks um, my own field of road safety is a good case in point we all very used to driving cars around but it's actually it's an activity that kills and seriously injures a lot of Tasmanians every year so it's a high risk activity that we are not particularly worried about and there's all sorts of other examples there one of the ways in which things that are difficult to quantify are sometimes tackled is getting experts together to think about risk and mitigate risk and so there's variable evidence about whether this is an effective thing to do but there is emerging evidence that a group uh, response is good but actually you need that group not to do it together in the setting that is shown here but actually to individually ask experts to give their opinion and then to see how those um, how that advice meshes and when you get lots of experts independently thinking about the problem then you tend to get a good outcome when you put all those together rather than what can happen in a group where people influence each other too much. So risk assessment and what constitutes a hazard and what constitutes an undesirable outcome in the environment sphere can be difficult having spent a long time thinking about forest practices I'm quite familiar with um, environmental impact as a possible source of conflict and debate and the different ways that people get involved and to care or not care about possible impact impacts is, is really interesting one thing that we do strive for is to keep risk a LARP as low as reasonably practical so this this is where this common sense approach to environmental impact assessment is important you need to manage obviously intolerable risks but not to put interventions in that are so expensive or so troublesome in other ways that you go so far down this triangle that you can't uh, that you eliminate the risk altogether which would mean not doing something when you do want to do it so uh, the example here is um, the introduction of Northern Pacific sea star in ballast water in boats that come into harbors like the Derwent for example and so shipping is important part of our economy and um, having cruise ships in port so it's not that we can keep these vessels completely contained but having processes and treatment and um, management in place to keep the risk of contamination with something like Asteria amurensis the northern pacific sea star which is now everywhere in the Derwent and is a real problem keep that risk as low as reasonably practical so I know I haven't talked about it here um, in a lot of detail but risk assessment forms take various shapes but there is this constant interaction between what bad things might happen as a result of this program or activity or proposal how likely is that to happen what are the consequences of that happening and how does that rank on the risk matrix if it's high how do we mitigate it to get that risk down or even if it's moderate how do we moderate how do we change that activity to get that risk down <clears throat> uh, so as well as environmental impact assessment in itself being a kind of risk assessment exercise you should be able to have a look around post to milo 
to see how the impact a risk assessment fits into um, this general concern that we have about good environmental outcomes and yeah, perhaps provide examples of environmental risk assessment like threatened species risk assessment, risk assessment around fire management and that delicate juggle between protecting people and properties and not um, eroding biodiversity values. I hope this helps.